Masters of Doom blew my mind just like players blow up monsters in Doom itself. But also, it made me sad. I'm sad because I can't erase my memory and read this book again for the first time in my life. I've never had a feeling like that. In my previous book reviews, I rated Spelunky, Shovel Knight and World of Warcraft Diary as god-tier books. Masters of Doom is god-tier plus. It took David Kushner 6 years to write and merely listing the people he interviewed during that time takes 2 pages of text. I believe that the result, which is more than 300 pages of pure gold, was well worth the effort. There's a lot to love about Masters of Doom, and I surely can't immerse you into the world of id Software the same way David does. I'll just describe two tiny parts of the book and let you experience this masterpiece yourself. First of all, this is a success story about two guys putting in an extreme amount of effort pursuing their dreams against all odds. This is what we all love to hear, and while reading it, you'll feel energized and motivated to work, because honestly, most likely you are in a much better position than them. Like many good stories, this book starts with the childhood of two key figures behind Doom, John Romero and John Carmack. You'll read about their rises and falls, as well as unbelievable difficulties they had to go through. John Romero was always drawn to the arcades in his childhood, for which he was constantly beaten up by his stepfather. Despite being grounded, black-eyed and yelled at, he always escaped back to the arcade. Much like Edmund McMillan, Romero used to draw extremely cruel and violent comics to release his own pain. And the yet another interesting parallel between these two creators is Romero's 10 different ways to torture someone and Edmund's 12 uses of dead babies, which is a game that is still available on Newgrounds. Out of the two Johns behind Eat Software, the stubborn and resilient Jan Romero is definitely a much more relatable character than Jan Carmack. Surviving the worst situation that could happen to him, Romero achieved mastery at programming by allocating his every spare moment to this endeavor, and eventually he prevailed. John Carmack instead seems to have been born a genius. He charted out his own game world for Dungeons and Dragons in the third grade, questioned rationality of religion in early school years, got transferred to the gifted and talented school program, taught himself programming in basic, and so on. However, life wasn't bright for him either. Due to his parents moving to a different place, he lost access to computers and programming, the things he loved more than anything. Thus, he decided to steal an Apple II from school. He got caught by the police and was sentenced to one year in a juvenile detention home. As the author cleverly puts it, most of the kids were in there for drugs. Carmack was in for an Apple II. He used to say that if he could simply program the computer, fix up his car and play D&D for the rest of his life, he would be happy. So that's what he did. He was basically married to his computer. Another thing I love about Masters of Doom is how it makes you feel like you are right there, in the same room as these people. You understand why and how their decisions were made, what they were thinking about, how did they feel, and so on. Thanks to this, you can learn about an approach each software had to its early games. They all began with John Carmack spending unbelievable amounts of time on research in order to make a revolution in what you can achieve with the game engine. Then, John Romero experimented with what it allowed them to do. The first side-scrolling mechanics ever seen on PC? Let's make Commander Keen, which is quite similar to Super Mario Bros. We can now use texture mapping to make bricks appear on walls? Catacombs 3D it is. 3D models are now an option? Quake is going to be our next game. I love the approach of looking at your strong points and resources and making a game around them. If you are very good at drawing horror pictures but can't code, make a point and click horror game. If you know a great musician, wrap a game around their music. Since I was the worst artist on the planet a few years ago, I made a game with just 5 colors and a resolution of 128 by 96 pixels. Anyway, if you have even a slightest interest in games, computers, modding or game development, you will love Masters of Doom. Just look at this. Nobody dared to give this book a 1 or 2 star rating. It has a great on Kindle label for a reason. 
By the way, if you'd like to purchase this book on Amazon, please use a paid link in the description to this video. But even if you don't, you have to get your hands on Masters of Doom. Ask the author for a free copy, rent it, steal it, do whatever you want, but read this book. It is a must. Actually, please don't do anything illegal, but I mean, you get the point, right? Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next book review. Farewell.